Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Welcome to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to show you um, a toaster sweater by Sew House 7. So I'll insert the normal picture here of the pattern and the line drawings. And what you can see is my hacked toaster sweater. So it does not look like the picture at all, but I have used the same pattern pieces to create that raglan sleeve, everything. Uh, the difference that I've done is that I've made a zipper in the middle and I've played with color blocking. You can see there's a black lateral panel here on the side. So to see how I got to this, that's coming in now, all the process. This is my idea for my hacked toaster sweater. So you can see the line drawings here, I've printed them out. Uh, I want to play with a fabric I have with stripes. And so um, on the front there, I want a black panel just in the, in the center where I'm going to put a zipper and that will attach onto a black collar. And then I want a panel there that will have horizontal stripes and then a lateral panel that's going to be black there. Um, the sleeves are also going to be horizontal stripes, but the cuffs are going to be vertical and so will the band at the bottom. Similar at the back, the only difference is that at the back there's no zipper or the black sort of piece there in the middle. And so I've already chopped up my pattern and I'll show you what it looks like so far. So um, here is the back. Um, I have lengthened my uh, pattern at the bottom by three centimeters, um, which in the end will only be two centimeters because there's a one centimeter seam allowance there. I would have liked to lengthen it more, but I am limited to this length of zipper. It's the only zipper I have. Um, so yeah, it's got to match this length. Uh, on the front here, you can see it's chopped up into many more pieces. And this is going to be black. It's going to be in the middle. That is where the zipper is going to go. This is going to be the horizontal stripes. And this is going to be the lateral panel for the front. So these panels are the same. I, I'm, I, um, I drew it on the front first and then I matched the same lines to the back. So that they look symmetrical. So yeah, now comes the fun of trying to match up all the stripes and everything like that. This is the back, it's on the fold. That is the lateral bit that is gonna be black and there's a centimeter seam allowance there and I also did leave a centimeter there. Uh, that is the neck piece and um, I didn't have enough uh, fabric of this black. So there will be a seam at the back of the neck but I have long hair, it will always be covered. So I left seam allowance for that. And here I left seam allowance because it's going to be open for the zipper bit. Then the front has three pieces. That's the middle. That's got the horizontal stripes, the lateral bit, and the middle there that's going to be black. So I left seam allowance there and there. But I didn't leave any seam allowance here uh, for the middle because it, there's going to be an added width with the zipper so I just left it and that is the bottom band that I cut with the stripes going vertical the cuffs are going vertical and the sleeves are going horizontal so far so good this is my sketch on the line drawings there of how I wanted the color blocking and so far I have the main body all done so there's the two black panels there in the middle where the zipper is going to be attached those lateral black ones same on the back now what's really going to give me a headache is attaching on the raglan sleeves and to match those stripes because I'm really particular about matching stripes um, yes that'll give me a, a little bit of extra work but it'll be worth it in the end so I'm using about a one centimeter seam allowance. So I made sure to match each, each stripe at the seam allowance I was using, every single stripe. Quite time intensive and I did that with every part of these sleeves. Now I sewed super slow, this is real time. And I'm actually sewing up to almost the pin. So that pin that you see there is marking the beginning of the stripe 
on both sides so I don't want to remove that pin until I'm like past that stage on the stripe so you see me going super mega slow and I remove the pin once I'm already on the stripe you see me taking out that pin so this took ages it gave me a headache the stripes make me dizzy so yeah lots of work but I think it, it's worth it in the end because I managed to match all the thousand stripes this is what I've done so far. So the main body is constructed. I have also attached the raglan sleeves. Um, now, for this being such a simple pattern, one way to make it super extra hard on yourself is to use thin stripes because I had to go ahead and match every single one. And yeah, it was quite time intensive, um, quite a lot of work. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the whole closing up the bottom band, the neck and the zipper process and that is when I'm going to show you more detail because it's a bit more involved as such but not hard. Put my band on there all the way around right sides together so like that and I've pinned them. See you can see the pins everywhere so I'm just going to go ahead and attach that band to the main body from one side to the other side. I've sewn the bottom band on all the way there and what I've done is I've pressed the middle from there, there including that seam allowance. So if I fold this, including what will be the seam allowance there, I have pressed the middle there and I've put a pin there because that's where my zipper is going to start. Now what I've done next is pin my collar all the way around the, the top and I've done the same as with the band. I've marked the middle there with a pin. So if I fold this and match the seam allowances there, that will be my middle and that's where my zipper is going to stop. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. This is one one of my front pieces there and I have my zipper there onto that so my zipper is facing down you can see the zipper there is towards the right side of my fabric and I have lined that middle band right there at the bottom where I marked with a pin and I even ironed it that marks the end of my zipper there and then there's a stitch line that starts the band there, uh, right there, and I want my zipper to match up on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that with chalk where I marked there. And then the end, right there, I have this flappy bit hanging. So I have folded there that little seam allowance with a pin, and I'm going to go and flip this over and match it with the seam of the band here on this side. So my zipper is enclosed in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this together. So there it is. It looks pretty weird, but this part here is where the band has already been sewn onto this part there. And then on this side is where I'm attaching the zipper and it'll be enclosed within the band right there as you can see. Now the same exact process is done on the top in the collar. So if I go up my zipper, we get to the collar area there and where the sweater meets the collar, there's a seam right there. I have marked it with chalk again so that I know where to match my zipper when I attach on the other side so right there so I also have a marking here on my collar that marks the middle there where it's going to fold over and I'm going to do the exact same thing now this little gadget is going to get in the way so I'm just going to pull it down and get rid of it for now so uh, the seam allowance on the collar that's already been attached, I'm going to leave it uh, looking up. So that is the way I'm going to pin it there for now. I'm going to fold that excess of zipper out of the way there and bring this 
over like I did on the band and I'm going to pin that. So again, the top end of my zipper is going to be enclosed within this collar. And then also, I'm going to meet that seam there and fold this little bit up. And this has just got to do with the way I'm going to finish the collar inside and because this is unlined. If this were a lined garment, I would do it differently, but this is just a really simple garment. So I wanna make sure I line these up really good. So I'm ready to sew on the first half of my zipper. I'm actually going to remove the other half so it doesn't get in my way. All I have to do is a straight stitch from up there, from the collar, be very careful there where the seam meets the collar. Keep going down, careful there with that union as well, all the way to the bottom, just a straight stitch, and then flip it around. zipper you can see there the excess of the zipper that I've left hanging that way you know uh, so it's all stitched in towards the bottom and now I'm going to flip it around and show you how the zipper at the bottom is encased within the band at the bottom and within the collar at the top so here is the collar and the zipper is in there you know and at the bottom as well see so I'm going to replicate and do the same on the other side uh, on the other side I want to show you this detail when I'm getting to the part where that thing is there that slides up now usually if you just lift your presser full and slide it back it'll go back in my case I struggled with it I wrestled with it wouldn't want to so I had to actually lift the whole thing up like you're gonna see me lift my needle and get it out move it and push it up and then get back to sewing because the band at the bottom is huge I'm doing a burrito method to uh, to finish it in so I've got everything inside there like it looks like a big fat worm so this is a zipper bit there I've left about five centimeters unstitched because I can't just I can't get that far and same as here so I have already sewn half of it, then I remembered I was filming, so I stopped to explain what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep stitching up the till bit there, and through that hole, I'm going to feed the whole jacket through. Now after the birth of that through the row I have hand stitched the collar on hand basted and now I'm going to edge stitch there with the machine and then where I put turned everything around there's a little space there that I have to hand stitch on one side and on the other side as well. So I'm going to show you the inside here of the collar it's nice and closed in there I did that at the, at the very end uh, so it was just one stitch after I hand basted. Now it was quite hard to hand baste, lots of layers. I used uh, my stretch needle, the thickest one, 100, you know, number 100, and it was fine. My, my, and my genome is, an, is amazing. It can go through all the layers, not like the, the one I had before in, in Bolivia. I've also done a top stitch there. If you can see from there to the end, just to have that zipper not flip open and everything from the inside. So I've done that as well. And then that little bit there that I had to hand sew after I birthed the jacket out of the burrito, that long worm you saw. I had a little opening there, so I had to hand sew that and it looks fine. So I did that on both sides. This other extreme also has a little piece there that's hand sewn. Um, and the burrito method worked in this case because this, bland, this band is huge. Look how wide it is. So I was able to fit all my jacket in there. If I was working with another type of jacket and the band was tiny, this method wouldn't work. Now, 
if I was making a jacket like this that is lined, it would have been even easier. But because I chose to make this unlined, I had to do this type of collar and that type of band at the bottom. So in the end, it turned out really nicely. I used a narrow zigzag for every single seam and um, overlocked as well. It's so nice and finished cleanly and I'm super, super happy with this. I mean, I just want a cold day so I can like wear it all the time because I put so much effort and look at this. I just, I'm in love with the matching here of these stripes. And you know, it was such a good choice to have this black band here because imagine trying to match the stripes to the zipper. That would have been nuts. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna show you some pictures. So I, I made sure to include pictures uh, with a skirt and with pants because it's like I'm going to wear it. So I'm super super happy with this. I hope you found that interesting. I mean you can go ahead and make the toaster sweater the normal way and I'm sure it would take you like half an hour to make. I just chose to challenge myself and make it harder but I'm so happy and I'm so so proud of this make. Super super happy with this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and you can like this video if you did and hit the notification bell so you never miss a sewing tip with me. Bye!